I'm going to Jerusalem all alone with almost no money, no friends or film crew and you are invited. Just myself showing you how to make most of it safely and expensively and easily. Coming up next, DIY Destinations Jerusalem. We are so fortunate to live in a small world with so many cultures, so much beauty and so much diversity. The world waits for no one. It's up to each of us to discover its magnificent destinations. I want to make travel accessible to all of us by showing how it can be done safely and inexpensively. Jerusalem is one of the oldest cities in the world, located on a plateau in the Judea mountains. It's considered holy in Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. During the long history, this city has been destroyed at least twice, besieged, attacked, captured, and recaptured hundreds of times. Today, it is under Israeli administration, but the Palestinians claim it as their future capital. Given the political sensitivity, rather than included in the Palestine or Israel episode, we decided to feature Jerusalem in this special mini episode. The most inexpensive way to get from the Ben Gurion Airport is by public bus run by the National Bus Company Egg. One of the green buses will first take you to LL Junction, where you will be transferred onto a direct bus to the Jerusalem Central Station. It comes every 30 minutes, but remember, it does not operate on Sabbath from Friday after 3 p.m. to Saturday afternoon. On the Central Station, catch a tram to the Old City by getting off at the City Hall stop near the Jaffa Gate or the Manassas Gate, two of the main entrances to the Old City. Stay nearby so you can access all the historical attractions by foot. All of the hostels inside the Old City are uniquely made from the Jerusalem stone. Consists of various types of pale limestone that have been used in the building since the ancient times, including the Western Wall. And as you can see, this is a really unique hostel because it's the building itself is like 700 years old, lots of history. Living in an ancient house like this, it's not every single day you get to do this. But my favorite, 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 favorite place is up in the again Paris. Most of them also have a rooftop overlooking the iconic attractions, a bonus. Jerusalem is fairly small and all you need is three days to fully enjoy it. Two days for the old city and one day for the new city. Keep in mind, many stores and public transportation are closed on Sabbath. But if you're on a time constraint, then sign up for one of the numerous free walking tours. For those with more time, download the free app, the Old City of Jerusalem Audio Walking Tours. The Old City is divided into four quarters. We will begin our journey from the Christian quarter starting from the Jaffa Gate. The first holy place we will visit is the Church of Holy Sepulchre, dating back to at least 4th century. It contains two of the holiest sites in Christianity. It is believed this is where Jesus was crucified and the location of his empty tomb, where he is said to be buried and resurrected. Jerusalem has attracted millions of pilgrims over the thousands of years. Christians can literally trace a footstep of Jesus. There is a mental phenomenon called the Jerusalem Syndrome, when a tourist convinced that they are the Messiah after visiting the Holy Land. On average, there's a hundred cases annually, with fully required admissions to the hospital. We continue our way to the largest and the most populous, the Muslim Quarter. It extends along the northern wall of the Temple Mount to the Damascus Gate Western Wall route in the west and the Lion's Gate in the east. This is where we recommend you start. The entrance marks the beginning of the last walk of Jesus from the prison to the crucifixion, the Via Dolorosa. This is a very famous arch 
in the back over there and beneath it is a Roman Catholic Church. The reason it's so famous is is believed Jesus passed under this arch for his final walk to the crucifixion. About a minute away around the corner is a small chapel belonging to the Armenian Catholic Patriarchate. This is where the exhausted Jesus yielded to his pain and fell first of the three times to the crucifixion. This scene is depicted in the altarpiece within the chapel. After all that walking, it's time to fill up with some amazing authentic Arabic treat sweets along the way towards Damascus Gate. You'll find <laughs> treats such as bakla, murlebak, and naif, all freshly made with local ingredients. Jerusalem is very safe with excellent security. You don't notice there are Israeli soldiers everywhere at all times. You shouldn't find any issues unless you're Arab or Muslim. I only see middle-aged Muslim looking men with facial hair being stopped by the police. Unofficially, these are the only minority that are targeted for random body search, questioning and administrative detention without charge. <laughs> Therefore, if you are Muslim or Arab looking, I recommend you wear as least as possible and do not carry any camera bags or anything resemble a knife or potentially mistaking you for being a suicide bomber. So leave your belt at home. The Damascus Gate is one of the main entrances to the old city. Its current form, the gate was built in 1537 under the ruler of the Ottoman Empire. Underneath, the remains of the gate dating back to the time of Roman rule in the 2nd century AD have been discovered and excavated. Jerusalem is also a great starting point to visit Palestine. Right across from Damascus Gate is the only Palestinian bus station serving as a transportation hub to Arab neighborhoods and to the rest of West Bank cities such as Ramallah, Bethlehem, and Jericho. A short distance to the east lies Herod's Gate. It's claimed that once it held a soup kitchen feeding lentil soup to the poor, while others believe underneath contained a prison where St. Peter's was held. We continue our tour through a Jewish quarter bordering the iconic Western Wall and the Temple Mount. Start by arriving early in the morning to enter the Western Wall Plaza to visit the wall and be prepared for a long lineup for the Dome of the Rock. The Western Wall made from the ancient limestone is considered the holiest place where Jews are permitted to pray due to its connection to Temple Mount. There is a common practice of placing written prayers to God into the cracks of the limestone. The earliest recorded occurrence of such phenomena dates from the early 18th century and stems from the Jewish tradition that divine presence rests upon the western wall. Today, over a million notes are collected twice a year and buried nearby Mount of Olives. On the Western Wall Plaza, there's a ramp which allows non-Muslim visitors to access the Temple Mount through the Moroccan Gate from Sunday to Thursday. To get access to Temple Mount, there's always a long lineup and it's always only open in the mornings and early afternoons. Uh, alternatively, you can come here and you still get a nice view of Dome of Rock and as well as Temple Mount. The Dome of the Rock, one of the two holy sites on the Temple Mount, was initially completed in 691. It is a shrine and now one of the oldest Islamic architectures. It has been called Jerusalem's most recognizable landmark with its golden dome. Right across is Al Aqsa Mosque, the third holiest site in Islam. It is believed that Muhammad was transported from the scarce mosque in Mecca to Al Aqsa during the night journey. The mosque was completely destroyed by an earthquake in 746, but was rebuilt in 754, again in 780, and finally 1033, where it stood to present day. Located in the Dung Gate, a free section of Jerusalem Archaeological Park offers a visitor a rare chance to climb up the original steps of 2000 year old Huda Gates that leads to a Temple Mount during the Second Temple Period. The archaeological park consists of Robinson's Arch, the Herodin Street, 
Huge stones and fallen remains from Temple Mount are remembered of the destruction in 70 AD. The old city is also home to numerous shivas and synagogues. Most notably, Herva Synagogue destroyed numerous times and rededicated in 2010. Located near the synagogue is where a Roman carta was discovered and dated back to Justinians in the first half of 6th century AD. The carta was depicted in a 6th century mosaic map of Jerusalem on a church floor in Malabar, Jordan. The central street has lines on both sides with columns. Today, portions of the carta have been rebuilt as a modern shopping lane. Jewish shopkeepers sell fancy souvenirs and keepsake to the tourists. We will finish the tour of the Old Jerusalem by visiting the Armenian quarter from Cardo. The Armenian presence in Jerusalem dates back to 4th century AD when the Armenia adopted Christianity as the national religion and Armenian monks settled in Jerusalem. The St. James Cathedral is dedicated to two Christian saints, James the Greater and James the Just. This ancient church, part which dates back to 420 AD, is one of the most decorated places of worship in the Holy Land. This quarter you can also sightsee from above by roof walking where you get a breathtaking eastward view of Temple Mount and Mount of Olives. Before we leave the Old Jerusalem, we'll pass by another iconic landmark, the Tower of David, also known as Jerusalem Citadel. It's an ancient citadel near the Jaffa Gate and contains most important archaeological findings dating back to 2000 years, including the dates of the first temple period. After exploring all of the old Jerusalem, I'm sure you'd agree it's time for some inexpensive food. You can eat really well even on a backpacker's budget, but you do need to leave the touristy old city and go local. Exit the Damascus Gate and walk across a street where you can find many, many, and many inexpensive fresh fruit, pastries, hand-squeezed juice, and tasty street food. Don't forget to try the jumbo falafel and connect a popular Palestinian bread sprinkled with sesame seed. You can also find very inexpensive healthy fast food run by the two restaurant chain called Kofes and Kofix in New Jerusalem. Both offer varieties of rice, pasta, salad, soups, and drinks. Everything on the menu is sold separately at a fixed price. Well, every single item, including the sandwiches, my pasta, and the soup is five shekels, which is roughly about dollar for the U.S. The primary form of transportation from the old city to New Jerusalem is by light rail tram. There is a stop directly outside the Damascus Gate, but if you are closer to Jaffa Gate, then you need to walk 5 minutes to a city hall stop. The line will take you to Jerusalem Central Bus Station for buses to other cities and settlements under Israeli control. But today, we'll be transferring onto another bus to visit the Knesset, the Parliament of Israel, and the Supreme Court. To the opposite of Knesset in the Supreme Court is a wool rose park containing 400 varieties of roses grown here. Many of them are gifts from around the world. It also includes an ancient mosaic preserved in the garden and the Knesset menorah located right outside the park, facing the Knesset. But below the stairs also lies the Jerusalem Bird Observatory as every spring and fall more than 500 birds migrate through Israel. Two thirds of the birds seen in Jerusalem are migratory. Although we do not take any political positions, most members of the United Nations General Assembly do not recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. However, the reality is, Jerusalem is the administrative capital and the seat of all branches of Israeli government. The Knesset, the parliament, is the center of its political power. Free tours for individuals are available on Sundays and Thursdays in multiple languages. Reservation is not required, but all visitors must provide a valid passport. The one-hour tour provides an overview on the history, role, and responsibility of the Knesset. 
the visitors will have opportunity to visit many parts of the building, including the Knesset Committee Room, the Assembly Chamber, and the display of Declaration of Independence. Situated across from the Knesset is the Supreme Court of Israel, which jurisdiction applies to all of Israel and the occupied territories. The building was donated to Israel by Dorothy de Rothschilds and opened in 1992. The restored mosaic at the entrance to the building was discovered at the ancient synagogue of Hamagadar. Free tours are available from Sunday to Thursday in English and Hebrew. Our journey ends by taking the breathtaking view of the old Jerusalem from Mount of Olives. From the top of the mountain near the Seven Arch Hotel is a remarkable vista site. You will be treated to a great panoramic view of the city and the hillside, covered by 150,000 graves on a Jewish cemetery dating back to 3,000 years. Jerusalem is a magnificent destination that combines ancient history with a bustling modern city. It allows all of us to see the history of three great religions and to experience it. Its archaeological rhetoric, spiritual landmarks, and holy sites allow all of us to reconnect with the important history, and most importantly, connecting with ourselves. Join us again as we discover the best of Israel from north to the south in our next episode. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it.